Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Crosses and Graces. My name is Peter Holm, and I'm here today to talk to you about the Novus Ordo Seclorum. That's the new order of the world. It's going to be a good topic today. So before I get started, let's thank uh, Restoring the Faith for hosting us here on the channel. And uh, make sure to check out the other videos in the series. Make sure to throw comments if there's stuff that you're confused about or have questions on or want to thank me or learn more about whatever you want to do. I'm happy to take the comments. I'll make sure to respond to them as I am able. Um, Yeah, and so after a few weeks off, hey, let's get this thing kicked off here. So the Novus Ordo Seclorum. Why am I talking about a new order of the world? I'm saying this because we're not talking about tinfoil hat stuff here. What we're talking about is the fact that there's a change going on. And why? Well, let's do this. In the beginning, there was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. These words that I just gave you are from the opening verse of the Gospel of John. Now, the sentiment that we have in that same first verse the opening there for the gospel of john is also in the glory be uh, when we say as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen now i'm starting off with these quotes to hit you very squarely here with a point god doesn't change god is who he was always is and always will be there is no change which means his order the first order the old order is God's, okay? So the old world order is his and his alone. Adam and Eve and all the structure which follows it is all his, and he has a way that he wants it administered because he comes first before all things are created. Uh, His existence has no beginning, has no end, which means he is everything. So we're talking about God before all things. His existence, his power, his plan, the first order, God's order, the old order. Now, when Christ came to us, he came as king of kings. Not president of presidents, not prime minister of prime ministers, and not senator of senators. But as king of kings, lord of lords, and a monarchy. And what I'm trying to get at here is that his order is the first order, the premier, the foundation, and it will remain forever. So Christ's order, the old order, is forever. No matter what comes and no matter how bad things on earth here get, Christ's order is still intact and will always be the premier order of all things until the end of time and space, okay? So the whole point here is that then what happens to people who say don't want Christ as their king and they don't want the old order? They have to do something to start removing Christ from the equation, God. So when we talk about God's adversaries, idolaters, they can't really live in sin without criticism if God and his people are still here to call them out to say, hey, what are you doing and why are you doing it that way? That, that's evil. We can't, we can't have that. Well, their only response then when this happens is a steady buildup of criticism of God's people, persecution of God's people, and ultimately eradication of God's people. Um, Satan was a liar and a murderer from the beginning, fell from heaven, making war on God, all because he argued with God about the plan and the order. So he and all of his people who follow him, whatever their creed may be, are ultimately working against the old world order to create a new one, to replace what was there. To revolt against God means that you're a revolutionary against Christ. That means Christ in that world, there's no way he can be king. There's no way that we can accept his divinity. Uh, And in that sense, this is anyone who would ascribe to revolutionary principles. Um, That means in the end, this man, this revolutionary who denies Christ's kingship and divinity must ultimately start to worship himself, creatures, anything else along those lines, earth worship, you name it. All of it falls in line with that same ideology. It's not good. If we could summarize these ideas together, what we're actually talking about then is a revolutionary order of a new world. Not a better world, but a new one. This is the Novus Ordo Seclorum, also known as the New World Order, started by Satan. From the moment he rebelled and he convinced Adam and Eve to eat of the fruit, and then sin was introduced into the world along with death, 
and Cain becomes the first human murderer, and all of the other sins continue from there, so that Ham becomes cursed, and all of his progeny become the cursed peoples that the Israelites are supposed to knock out of the promised land, on to then the problems within the Israelites in terms of how many different bad judges and bad kings, and then ultimately we're talking bad priests like Caiaphas, we're talking about the Pharisees who ultimately do what? Establish their own religion where it was okay to murder Christ, the Son of God. And then all of those misconceptions and the twistings of everything truthful start to come into the world and start to influence everything. So whether it was Adam and Eve's sins or Ham's sins or the Pharisees' sins from all different directions, everything Satan is trying to do whatever he can to grab as many souls of us, you and me, and take us to hell so that he can get back at God because of how angry he is about the entire plan where he is not the centerpiece like Mary. He is not actually in the crowd, okay? He's trying to make a new world order. So this means he has to destroy the old order. This means he has to destroy Christ's world. He has to destroy Christ's commandments, Christ's church. He has to get rid of all Christian morality and Christian law. Every single aspect of what we are as a culture, as Catholics, as Christians, he has to destroy it, every single aspect of it. That is the only way he can ultimately get to the place he wants to be. And in the end, this was all prophecy. We knew this was coming. We've seen all different flavors of this now permeating and getting close to our modern era. The phrase of the alchemists, solve et coagula, dissolve and coagulate. This phrase is a satanic phrase. You have to break down the old to bring up the new. This is what is on tattooed on Baphomet's arms. I know that Taylor Marshall, I'm going to give a shout out to him. Great video on Salve at Coagula. Go look that up. It actually builds on this and you start to understand what's going on and why all these different philosophies that are not Catholic can all work together and coincide and attack the same church and the same philosophy, the same Christ, the same God. Ultimately, for the same master, this is what we're talking about when we say the new world order which is breaking down God's order to remake everything in its own warped and twisted satanic image. It's all gross. It emulates and builds on the initial phrase in Genesis, you could be like gods. And this, what we're watching, is people taking advantage of everything they think makes them godlike. And whether that's medicine, whether that is law, whether that is money, whether that is sex, it doesn't matter. They're trying to take all of it to do whatever they want with it, to twist it all up on itself so that they can be like gods. They're wanting to remake everything and ignore everything that God gave us. This is not good. We end up with a group of people who are sitting here denying the divine kingship of Christ, the lordship of God, and all of his heavenly gifts that he is shedding upon us and the opportunity to ascend. Everyone instead who follows this new world order is being like Judas. For 30 pieces of silver, a little bit of comfort here, a little bit of money here, a little bit of power here, they want to go and sacrifice everything and break it all down. All non-Christian ideologies originate from this point, period, and it is a point of war. This new world order versus the old world order. The new world where anything goes, brotherhood of men, anyone wants to feel good and have stuff, regardless of whether or not maybe we should be thinking about sacrificing, penance, prayers, masses, God, and ultimately then us taking up our own crosses and going to Calvary, okay? So that's a thing. So we need to think about that. How are we living to glorify God, to bring forth the old world order, to protect it, to make sure that it is reinstantiated, that the laws here reflect God's laws, that we are standing clearly against this new order of the world, the satanic order, are we speaking out against it and saying that is not Christian, that is not like Christ? Are we sitting there saying that we know how to stop the armies of Satan that are all over the earth, all of his minions, okay? Do you know enough about your faith to resist the new world order? You got to ask, all right? What tools do you have to wage this war? Are you going to mass? Are you in a state of grace? Are you going to confession? Are you reading holy books? Are you looking at videos like this? And more importantly, are you telling people? 
Are you educating? Are you telling them to walk away when you see things about something that talks about modifying the RNA of your body? Are you saying, is this okay? Or are you sitting there going, well, you know what? I mean, the world says it's okay, so we should all do it. You need to think about this, all right? When the world and the powers that be, the doctors and the presidents, and just keep going through all the titles of the worldly titles, not ones gifted by God, allowed by God, but not endorsed by God. Are we, are we giving in to those earthly, worldly titles, or are we sitting there and questioning them and saying, I don't know if you're speaking for God. And do we have enough in terms of grace and discipline, virtue, so we can stand against it? I'm going to hit a few more episodes here coming up where we're going to go more in depth on this topic and continue building because there's a bunch of different ideologies that surround this new world order, even though they don't really all understand the fact that they're working together. Uh, Demons hate each other. There are no friends in hell. Well, by the same token, the LMNOP crowd is not necessarily great friends with Marxists, and the Marxists aren't really exactly the best friends with uh, the uh, followers of Muhammad. All of these different factions, and there's more, countless, don't all do the same thing for the same reasons, even though in the end they have the same master, the same evil one, who's driving all of them into some really dark stuff. Are you ready to ask God for help and wage this war? Are you ready to ask the Blessed Virgin for help so we can wage this war? Are you getting your guardian angels praying to them daily so we can engage ourselves in this war? St. Michael, are you saying that prayer daily to engage in this war so that in the end as we work and build ourselves up and protect ourselves, are we doing what's necessary to glorify God, defend the old world order, instantiate it and build from here because things are about ready to get really tough? And are you ready for what's coming? Now, I think if you keep tuning in, keep asking questions, keep learning, commit yourself to God and to being Catholic and living Catholic and ultimately getting prepped to die as a Catholic, we got this, all right? And again, if you're in, you're with me, awesome. I'm glad this helped, okay? Ask me questions. If there's stuff you don't like or you don't know or you have concerns, issues, whatever, give me comments below. Again, thank you to the Short in the Face for hosting this show. And then, as always, I'm going to say uh, thank you for watching. May God bless us all. And uh, St. Joseph, pray for us. I'll see you next time. Take care.